Good morning. It's Tuesday. I'm still full of cold, but I made it through last night. And and it was an interesting one. Um, as you will likely remember, we started out with a three-way split. Part of the team being held prisoner by the virtual adepts. Part of them being held prisoner by the technocracy. And part of them on their way to make a deal to hopefully fix everything. Now, that's where the game got interesting. Because you see, Doc, one of the members of the group, had been receiving coded messages from the Cassandras. Um, for those unfamiliar with the technocracy, the Cassandras are um, a group of soothsayers uh, within the technocracy that no one's ever been able to figure out who they actually are. Um, they seem to act within the bounds of technology, and they seem to predict the future. And they occasionally just drop messages on technocrats in order to uh, make sure things go the right way. <coughs> Well, he meets someone who refers to themselves as Cassandra. This someone is an AI that is remote controlling a 12 foot tall hit mark. Um, he provides the evidence that they've been given, which Cassandra immediately knows to be falsified, but she's okay with that. She wants to use it anyway. It turns out that her group have had almost enough information to pin Nefantic ties on the director already, and they just needed a little bit more to push them over the edge. So, falsified or not, she figures it's good enough to, uh, to be that last straw. Um, so, yeah, Doc and Madman are now whisked away to Cassandra's base to prepare to invade the Flatiron building. <coughs> and my voice is just trying to fail on me. Uh, so, yeah, they're planning to invade the Flatiron building. Meanwhile, we have Kim and Charles, who are met by Jeremiah, the architect, who is an elderly virtual adept who steps into um, the space that they have been occupying and explains to them that there's really no need for them to be enemies, that the virtual adepts aren't out to kill them, uh, but would rather actually invite them to join. Uh, Jeremiah shows them the ongoing project that is Reality 2.0. This new world upgrade that is currently in beta testing. Um, and, of course, uh, philosophical differences set in. And it turns out that although both Kim and Charles are quite upset with the technocracy, they don't agree with the virtual adepts either. Now, personally, I'm just convinced that both of them are awkward as hell, and can't agree with anyone, including themselves, um, but, you know, that's how it is. Uh, they were offered a chance to join, Kim said no, he was expelled off to a holding area. Charles said, wait, no, bring him back, I'll, I'll, I'll accept on his behalf, you know, I'm not accepting without him, Jeremiah brought Kim back, Charles and Kim talked some more, it became obvious, because Jeremiah was listening to every word they said, that they definitely weren't actually going to be allies, and at best, were going to lie to them, to get out to save their friends, and... Uh, at worst, um, 
we're just not going to agree at all. So eventually, after a lot more debate, uh, Jeremiah put both of them into holding. Um, so, um, yeah, they, uh, they're in timeout now. And then our final group. Uh, Jamie held out for over 14 hours under torturous conditions. Uh, Taylor, on the other hand, broke after about three. And, and, and sung like a, a, a bird. Uh, what that meant then was that, impressed by her ability to withstand and to fight and to be obstinate in the face of what was obviously unrelenting uh, torture, the director showed up to make her an offer. Now, this was quite interesting because she accepted it almost immediately. Um, you know, she asked a few conditions. She basically said that she wanted to keep Taylor around as like a mascot or a slave or something. Um, and after the agreement was made, she was sent off to a very nice set of suites uh, to clean up and eat and etc. Um, with the promise that they would speak later on that evening. Uh, once upstairs, Jamie met with something. Um, something that referred to itself as the deal. And Jamie asked, well, what are you? And it presented its hand and said, take my hand and you will understand everything that I am. Which, in all fairness, was completely true and accurate. Because willingly accepting that hand sealed the deal. And Jamie has now begun her uh, transformation. Means that it's going to make the next session very, very interesting. Um, we are shaping up to a conclusion. I'm guessing probably two more sessions will do it for us. Um, it's uh, it's looking to be interesting. We might have some people on some very, very different sides. Uh, and I've got no idea how we're getting Charles and Kim back. Because they just refused to even lie and say that they accepted things as they were. Um, yeah, so, there we are. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you continue to enjoy the channel. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and um, I'll be back either this afternoon or tomorrow, I'm not sure yet, uh, to talk a bit more about Changeling. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, the next game that we will be running after this one concludes will be a game of Changeling. Uh, so, yeah, enjoy your day, have a good one, and see you.